Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 661. Medications and Nutritional Deficiency. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about your medications and how they may leave you with some nutritional deficiencies that we know how to fix. So I bet, I bet you've heard a lot that there's no free lunch or uh, there's no medication without a side effect, and that's true. There is no free lunch and there is, n- there is no medication you can take without causing some kind of other imbalance or possible side effect to that medication. But that's that's kind of the price of getting you better when you need to take a medication. So uh, these are prescribed by your doctor. They're things that you need, uh, need to take for your health. But some of these problems with uh, nutritional deficiencies that your medications cause aren't talked to you talked about to you because either the doctors don't know or they don't have enough time to tell you all of this. So this is something that will help you stay healthy even in the face of short visits with your physician. So um, the first one I think most people know about by now, but this is if you take a statin for high cholesterol, then you need to take CoQ10. CoQ10 is an essential enzyme, uh, essential nutrient for your liver, for liver health. And statins use it up. They just use it so that you can't have it to make your liver actually detoxify your body safely. So everybody who is on a statin should be taking CoQ10 200 to 400 milligrams a day. And that you can find in Amazon. On Amazon, we have a BioBalance Health page. You can look at that. We don't carry CoQ10 in the office, but we do have some recommendations for you. Uh, What are the symptoms that you have if you have CoQ10 deficiency? One of them is fatigue and the other is depression. And we know those are the two most common complaints that people have when they go to the doctor. So if you can remedy that with just a supplement and not take another drug, that would be very nice. And you can do that by taking the CoQ10. It'll take a month or so. Supplements are never as fast as a medication, but it takes about a month or so to restock your CoQ10 in your body. So that's very important also as an anti-aging kind of a a supplement. CoQ10 is really necessary to keep you healthy and young. Well, what else causes CoQ10 deficiency? Well, beta blockers. Beta blockers are are like metoprolol. Anything you take for either blood pressure or a fast heart rate, there's lots of side effects to beta blockers. Some is hair loss. Some is fainting when you stand up. Some, I mean, it drops your blood pressure. If you're taking it for pulse and you have normal blood pressure, it can drop your blood pressure. So there's a lot of things that uh, beta blockers have as side effects to the drug. But another thing that can help you is to take CoQ10 to prevent the fatigue and the depression that goes along with that. So that's something if you're taking that, those drugs, you should be taking the CoQ10. Other medications that you wouldn't even think about for CoQ, that cause CoQ10 deficiency are oral contraceptives. Any kind of oral estrogen causes you to have a low CoQ10. So you should add, add that to your diet. And believe it or not, antidepressants. So you're depressed. You take an antidepressant. It takes away your CoQ10, and you're more depressed. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So um, if you take if you have any of these medications in your uh, med list, then you should take 200 to 400 milligrams of CoQ10 a day. It's really, when you take it, you don't know you even took it. It doesn't, it takes a long time to work, so it's gonna take four to six weeks, and 
it doesn't really have a lot of side effects to taking it. It's just like having a food or an enzyme that is uh, very beneficial to you. Now, um, a lot of people are on diuretics. Now, we write a diuretic called spironolactone, and this is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about thiazide diuretics like hydrochlorothiazide. HCTZ, which is a very common diuretic used in lots of different combinations with blood pressure medications or medications for swelling. You may take it because your legs are swollen or because your blood pressure is high. So this is very important. If you take th any, any kind of thiazide diuretic, you should also take magnesium and zinc because it gets rid of all the magnesium and zinc in your body while it's taking the sodium out. That can cause muscle spasms, prostate issues, uh, and constipation, just to name a few symptoms of low magnesium and zinc. So you, you have to take about 50, 25 milligrams twice a day or 50 milligrams of zinc a day and between 400 and 600 milligrams of magnesium glycinate. And that should replace what your medication is wasting. It's going out in your urine, So you, along with salt. So you need to replace that. Um, Ever since Motrin, Aleve, Advil, Ibuprofen, um, Naproxen, which is gener generic for Aleve, uh, became over-the-counter, people take them like candy. And <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's really not good for you to take those medications unless you absolutely positively need it. They're not sleeping pills. They're for pain. And if you have pain, then you can take them, but they're short-term answers. They're not long-term answers because they cause GI malabsorption for all your nutrients. So if you take NSAIDs, you may not be absorbing your supplements. You may not be absorbing your food nutrients. You may not be absorbing your other medications. It can also cause depression, anxiety, and other vitamin and mineral deficiencies because you're not absorbing it. So NSAIDs are just really cause a lot of trouble. And the way you have to uh, replace things, basically you have to replace three different types of, um, actually four different types of uh, supplements. You have to take folic acid, and I always recommend methylfolate, 500 milligrams a day. You also have to replace vitamin C deficiency because the NSAIDs use up your vitamin C. Vitamin C is used for everything, the cross links, um, in your bones and your collagen. Vitamin C is used for, um, for your immune system. Vitamin C is essential to almost every activity um, in your body. Think Linus, Linus Pauling, Pauling was the doctor who said everyone should be taking vitamin C in the 50s, and he was right. So to, if you take NSAIDs very often, or God forbid every day, then you need to be taking vitamin C 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day to replace what you aren't absorbing. So it's kind of like we overwhelm your, your stomach and your intestines with more vitamin C than you need so that you can only absorb a little bit of it because you're taking the NSAIDs. You should also, um, you also have amino acid deficiency. So say you're a, a weightlifter and you, you've been prescribed meloxicam for pain in your joints. Well, you're trying to get protein into your body Protein's made of amino acids, and you can't get enough protein to make enough muscle for your weightlifting because you're taking this NSAID. Meloxicam is actually a, a, a prescription, but you won't be told that you need to take all of these other things to balance it, and you, especially your proteins. You need to eat more proteins and more amino acids to make up for what goes away uh, with the NSAIDs. One of the amino acids is arginine, and there are arginine supplements that you can take. So uh, the last is NSAIDs kill off your good bacteria in your intestines, and there are a lot of, of um, side effects that occur from that. You can get celiac disease from that. Basically, you can, you can if you have a lot of bad bacteria, you have gas, you have belly pain, you have swelling in your intestines. Basically, your stomach swells and hurts. Um, you can have constipation. You can have diarrhea. You can have IBS. All of those things can happen just because you're taking a leave every day. So you have to think about this. And then you have to replace the good bacteria, which is probiotics. So you should be taking two 
probiotics a day just to balance what the NSAIDs are taking away and, and killing off in the good bacteria. Or you can ask your doctor to write Celebrex, which is not an NSAID and does not harm any of these things, and you just change your drug. Celebrex is generic, it's now affordable, and it's 200 to 400 milligrams twice a day, and it does a better job of fighting joint pain or any other kind of uh, pain without having a narcotic. So that's a really good answer. Okay, we'll move on to another very common drug that people take, and, it, and some of these drugs are over-the-counter now, and they're called PPIs, they're proton pump inhibitors. And that's omeprazole, Prilosec, basically the, those are the two biggest names in uh, PPIs. So here's what they do. They stop your stomach from pumping uh, acid into your stomach to help you break down your food. So your stomach's meant to mix up your food with acid and break down your food so that it can go into your small intestine and then be broken down more by enzymes. So it requires acid for that. Many of us have reflux. Many of us have, um, have halitosis, have uh, bad breath, have all kinds of GI problems that we go, oh, yeah, this, looks, this is for the GI tract. Let me take this. You can buy it over the counter. You don't even need a doctor to write this for you unless you want the higher dose. So um, some, sometimes if you have a stomach ulcer, you'll take it for a period, small period of time. But originally, when these were passed through the FDA, they were meant for two weeks at a time. That's it. Most people are put on it and never taken off. And they take it the rest of their lives. And what this does is it does lots of things, but one of the things is it kills off your ba good bacteria. So when you're trying to make neurotransmitters, you're trying to make antidepressants in your gut, that's where they're made. You're trying to get all the neurotransmitters that go to your brain, all of the feel-good hormones like dopamine and, and serotonin to go to your brain. When you're trying to metabolize your food and absorb all the nutrients that you're taking in with your food or your supplements, this prevents that. It just, basically, it just destroys it because you can't, it doesn't allow you to actually break the food down enough so that it goes into your intestines and gives you intestinal disease because you've got big molecules that are then trying to get through your intestinal lining. And that can end up causing gluten intolerance. It can cause celiac disease. It can cause a lot of other diseases secondary to the, a leaky gut, which are autoimmune diseases. Down the line, this can be a real big problem. So I don't know when we decided that people should start taking this all the time, but what we need to do if you had to take it, pretend you had um, a reflux esophagitis. So your, esoph your esophagus was burned by the acid in your stomach. Then maybe you'd need to take this chronically. That's pretty severe. And if you did, you'd have to take your B12, you could either take it as a shot, methyl B12 shot, or a methyl B12, I would choose a sublingual tablet where you can absorb it through, through your mouth, through the lining of your mouth, so you put it under your tongue and dissolve it or chew it. Uh, same thing with methylfolate, you should take methylfolate sublingually so it doesn't go to your stomach and get destroyed. And you need to take vitamin D, which unfortunately is hard to take sublingually, it's hard to get that through, but there are some sublingual tablets. If you are taking that, you need to take replace these vitamins because they're being destroyed if you just take them orally or from your food. In addition, PPIs, these, these antacids, can cause the growth of dangerous bacteria called, one of them is Haemophilus, and since I'm a gynecologist, I had to deal with Haemophilus all the time in my patients. Some of them never even told me they were on these medications because they were over the counter. But Haemophilus is a fishy smelling vaginal discharge. And it comes from the intestines uh, basically infecting or, or seeding the vagina with bacteria because there's always bacteria down there from wiping the wrong way or having some kind of loose stools. It, it, your vagina is not a completely sterile place. 
And some of the bacteria are, is going to get to your vagina, but it easily fights most bacteria. It doesn't fight this nasty bacteria called Haemophilus. So you get a fishy, stinky discharge, which then continues and you pass it back and forth with your partner and your gynecologist and your urologist or, or family doctor are trying to fix this with antibiotics, which work for a short period of time. And then because you're taking a PPI, you've got all this in your intestines, it reinfects you. So you just can't get rid of it. So we found that taking people off PPIs, all of them, the omeprazole, the Prilosec, the over-the-counter medications, and the prescription ones, and changing them to um, Pepsid, who, who knew, Zantac, histamine receptor blockers, basically. They don't do the same thing. They are not, they are not a problem for your intestines. They don't cause overgrowth of hemophilus. They don't cause any of those things, and you don't have to take a whole bunch of supplements just to make up for taking that one pill. So I would suggest changing to Pepsid and stopping all of this PPI stuff unless you were really ill and your doctor said you had to do it or else. Um, then you can add the other, these other supplements to make up for it. But um, change to Pepsid. I mean, that Pepsid and Zantac just don't have those kind of side effects. And I don't think any of these were meant to be taken every single day for the rest of your life. So you need to think about stopping them and seeing what happens and seeing if you get reflux, you get pain in your stomach or not. So um, these, these are the things, these are the drugs that we prescribe to patients that can cause other things down the line that you should know about if you're taking any of them. Lastly, sometimes we do surgeries that can cause ongoing problems. One of the surgeries are the sleeve procedures or the, the bariatric surgery where we're removing part of the stomach, maybe part of the small intestine. And that makes the patients forever malabsorb. Patients that have had this surgery have to take specifically sublingual under the tongue or buccal vitamins and minerals. They have to take special kind, maybe berry melt, B-A-R-I melts. There's something that's on, um, you can get them at, in, on Amazon, but they have almost every vitamin and mineral that you can take by just putting them in your cheek and letting them dissolve because you can't dissolve them or get the benefits of them through your stomach and intestines. So if you've had those surgeries, you have to be on special vitamins and minerals. They should have told you that. And you should be on them every single day and not miss because you need to have that kind of um, support that you can no longer get from your food or from pills that you're taking. Uh, another surgery, and this will be the last one I address, there, there of course are other things that I haven't addressed, but another surgery that um, can cause problems is the removal of your gallbladder. You know, basically your, your gallbladder can, takes bile, concentrates it, and puts it into your stomach to actually, I mean into your intestines, to actually help dissolve fats in your food. So when you don't have a gallbladder to do this, you, it, your intestinal bacteria needs what's in the bile. And if you don't have it, you have to take specific enzymes to help you dissolve your food and metabolize it. So people who have had a gallbladder removal need to take their enzymes, the digestive enzymes, with each meal. I know that sounds like a big hassle, but it will help keep you from getting other diseases down the line. It will help keep the flora or the bacteria in your intestines doing their job. It will keep all of your intestinal products, all of the antidepressants, all of the neurotransmitters, being, it'll keep them from being destroyed, basically, by bad bacteria. So you need that good bacteria. Probiotics is helpful, but also taking the enzymes to break down uh, your food is essential if you've had a gallbladder removed. So as doctors, we try to do no harm, and that's one of, our, what, one of the things that we live by. But sometimes some of the drugs that we give cause other nutritional problems, and we need to tell our patients what they are. But granted, doctors don't have that much time anymore to tell their patients all of this. This is something that um, I'm sure I was guilty of in the past, 
and I have more time with my patients now, and we try to have our nurse practitioners relay all this information to, their, to our patients as well when they come in. So these are things that you should remember if you're on any of these drugs and that you should do something about. Um, it's, I, I don't, I'm not really blaming doctors. I'm trying to just make you healthier. So I don't want you to transfer any blame to, to the medical profession. I just want you to know what you have to do if you're on these medications. So um, please listen. Don't be angry. Just get better. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.